Hi everyone, and welcome back to Manda T and Me, and welcome back to Black Haven. Um, as you remember from last time, um, Kendra was trying out the um, the interactive tour with um, one of the handheld devices. Um, I'm really bad at following directions, as usual. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, because it's Flag Day and technically the Historical Society is closed, we're going to go ahead um, actually up to the Plantation House and do a little uh, investigating uh, with the audio tour. So let's hop back into the game. So we should just be heading outside now. All right. Don't hate the view. Let's do this. Okay. This impressive lawn once oh um, all right. Welcome to the Blackhaven Hall Historical Society audio tour. I'll be your host throughout your journey into the world of Thomas Harwood, America's forgotten founding father. You can begin walking towards the house now. We recommend you take the path on the left. You can pause or restart each tour stop at any time by using the touchscreen on your personal digital tour guide. Once a stop is finished, just scan the QR code on another plaque to continue. Your digital device will show you the remaining stops you have left to visit. You can also rescan any plaque to hear its tour stop again. For the moment, let's forget the present and travel back to 1781 at the height of the American Revolution. You're now walking along the same grand entrance path that guests to Blackhaven took towards the mansion after passing through the gate of the large brick wall that surrounded this yard. Blackhaven was not always so imposing. In the 1600s, this land was used mostly by small tobacco farmers who bravely crossed the ocean to start new lives in Virginia. But on a misty night in 1644, many of those lives ended when a band of treacherous Indians launched a sneak attack, ruthlessly killing even women and children. Still to this day, some say you can see the ghosts of these families trying to find one another, some even without their scalps. These stories didn't intimidate Nathaniel Harwood. He smartly purchased discounted lots and began the story of Blackhaven as we know it. We'll continue our tour at the top of the hill. Damn, are they all going to be that long? Or have ghosts? Okay, I already have so many questions, especially about the idea of treacherous Indians on their own land. I thought the last one was the grand view. You've now reached the grand circle of Blackhaven Hall where visiting carriages would parade. But in 1781, there were additional buildings. To the left stood the kitchen, built freestanding to keep out smells, smoke, and protect against fires. British cannon, however, were another story. To the right stood the fine stables, housing beloved animals, including Eleanor Harwood's legendary horse, Duchess. Let's take a closer look at the house. This girl really named her horse Duchess. I'm pretty sure I would be friends with Kendra in real life. 
I love her sassiness already. And it's totally well founded. Oh, I know this style. Ionic, I think. No, Doric. Grease, you didn't hear that. Before we go in, step back and take in Blackhaven Hall. This house is an example of Georgian architecture, named after British kings like the tyrant King George III. This style features symmetry, balance, and Greco-Roman influences, but with little ornamentation. Thanks to a state-of-the-art structural glass restoration, Blackhaven now has regained its original form. This striking, award-winning design by international firm JJC Architects duplicates the original porches, peaked roof, and top rows of dormer windows. Completed in 2019 at a cost of over $20 million, the restoration received funding from Harcourt Industries and its CEO, Thomas Harwood III, and is even LEED certified. Let's go inside. They're really trying to boost the environment on a tobacco plantation. I'm not gonna lie, the building sounds in this game, while irritating, are super authentic. <laughs> We need to get the reception desk up in here. You're now in what was once one of the finest rooms in all of Virginia, with elaborate oak carvings handcrafted by Blackhaven carpenters. Straight ahead is the grand staircase, matching the exact dimensions of the original. You might be wondering at this point what's under your feet. Below is one of the vaulted Blackhaven cellar rooms. You can explore the cellar in a later stop. The open spaces to the right likely held parlors for the Harwood family to relax together. Let's go through the doorway to the left, into the former Harwood dining room, where meals were brought from the kitchen every day. Operating an 18th century household was hard and thankless work, requiring cooking, cleaning, lighting fires, and managing staff. But according to Thomas's diary, his wife Sarah did so always with a smile. To see how Thomas showed his gratitude, head through the door to the outside. Yeah, Sarah must have really thrown her back out for everybody. Mm-hmm. This space was arguably the largest ballroom in the colony, outshining even the governor's mansion in Williamsburg. Thomas built it for his wife, Sarah, who although careful and pious, loved entertaining, especially at the annual Harvest Ball, a must attend event for every Virginian. The impressive marble fireplace that kept dozens of dancing couples warm is one of the few fixtures to survive the Blackhaven fire. Thomas wrote regularly to General Washington throughout his life, which may explain this fireplace's similarity to one at Mount Vernon. If you're interested in trying to dance yourself, you can scan the bonus plaque to hear an 18th century minuet. Try your luck at dancing the pattern. Let's head down the stairs. I gotta start watching to see if people actually try to do this. For real? That sweet, sweet harpsichord. Not a huge fan of the harpsichord, not gonna lie. Um, oh, that's gonna be a spotlight, I guess. The brick arch above has become known as the Defiant Gate because its majestic and haunting shape survived the Blackhaven fire. So popular with visitors that many would break off pieces to take home as souvenirs, the elaborate carved doorway you see now is actually a reproduction installed in 1954, though some still mistake it for the original. The 
gate has also hosted many weddings, and local superstition says no unmarried couple can pass through together, or their love will be forever broken. This legend may stem from Eleanor Harwood, who refused to dance with her fiancé in Blackhaven's ballroom before they were wed. In the spirit of freedom, we'll let you do as you please, but we are not responsible for any broken hearts. Head around to the rear side of the house, and look for the stairs to the cellar for the next stop. Don't worry, my mom would be trying to break off something else if I tried to get married here. Rightfully so. Aww, why would you do this? Uh, come on, guys. It's usually just the balls or the name. It's actually kind of impressive to get them both on one. Of all the stops on our tour, this is the one that looks closest to how it might have in 1781. The Harwood Cellar stored all the beer, ale, and imported wine the family needed to entertain in the ballroom above. If you look up now, you can see the first level where we stopped before. You may also notice curious drawings on the cellar walls. Visitors to the Blackhaven ruins notice the central symbol, naming it Harwood's Lucky Eight, and the shape has come to represent the resilience of the Harwood family. Although Thomas loved codes and ciphers, we don't know who drew the original, and many subsequent tourists added their own variations. These are now their own history, and protected by glass, but you're welcome to add your own on our post-it wall. It really doesn't look like an eight, though. Mm -mm. Oh, I keep using spacebar to like interact because it's like such a common interaction button. I kind of want to poke around a little bit. <laughs> it is beautiful. It's definitely that's very Virginia. I could get used to this view. Mm -hmm. Plantations like Blackhaven often had their own ports for shipping tobacco. So for many visitors, this rear side of the house was the front. Workers would roll down large barrels called hogsheads to be loaded into the tall ships bound for the Chesapeake Bay and out to the Atlantic. The distant riverbank is dotted with small creeks and inlets, including one shady pool that may have given Blackhaven its name. During the 19th century, a legend arose that Samuel Harwood had done business with pirates and had allowed them to bury their gold beneath one of the riverbanks. In hard times, treasure hunters can still be sometimes spotted, although now with metal detectors. One treasure we know existed was the spectacular walled garden that once stood between here and the river, full of exotic plants and flowers to support Thomas's study of botany. Now, let's head back inside. This time, take the stairs all the way to the top. They really need to do the garden next. All things considered, I'd like to know what exotic plants would be considered exotic. Can I poke around? I hope so. Harwoods of Blackhaven, the ingenuity and elegance of a truly American family. Life in colonial Virginia was never easy. By the end of the 18th century, the pressure amongst Virginia's elites to distinguish themselves could be enough to tear a household apart. But for the Harwoods of Blackhaven Hall, family meant something. 
In the sweeping history, David Reynolds recounts a story of love and commitment from Thomas and Sarah's intense and private romance to their work-raising cultured daughters of the Enlightenment. The Harwoods preserve their unbreakable bonds without sacrificing style. Whoa. Black Haven Ablaze. How one fiery night changed the course of the American Revolution. 30 bucks. I also saw. It didn't look like it was on the list. Pillars of Destiny. Here stands the only of Blackhaven's columns to survive the flyer that engulfed the mansion. Made of shaped brick with a plaster exterior, the set was moved inside for preservation and replicas incorporated into the facade of the front porch. That's kind of cool we get to see inside. Did we poke around in here? Kind of. Okay. Oh, I hate glass steps or open back steps. They're absolutely the worst. Oh, that's way too much glass. Okay, wait. Oh, we have to go all the way to the top. That's right. Okay. Ooh, I can feel being up here in my stomach. From this observation deck, you can see the sheer size of the house as not even the Harwood family ever could. And how about the view? Spectacular now. In the 18th century, this was simple attic space, storing house goods and overflow visitors. Workers at Blackhaven did gossip about strange goings on in the attic, passing rumors of occult ceremonies and witchcraft. But while the entire Harwood family loved puzzles and secrets, there's no evidence of anything more witchy than a stray broom or two. When you're done admiring the view, head down the stairs to the second floor elevated walkway. Though part of me wants to see if I can make this rock back and forth. Never mind, too scared. <gasps> From this elevated walkway, we can get another marvelous view of the Blackhaven restoration. You can head left and walk along the platform on your way to the front porch balcony. The reconstruction began with the clearing of centuries of rubble, not all of it from the 18th, as many locals had found the ruins to be a convenient dumping pit. Local legends told of Blackhaven servants who were buried alive in the collapse, but no human remains were ever discovered. Once the rubble was clear, architects repaired the brickwork and built the central steel structure to provide support for the glass panels. If you look at some sections, like the glass corner coming up on your left, you'll notice that many plates of glass are actually acting as support columns, maximizing the amount of light and visibility in this innovative restoration. Go Huskies, huh? Whoop, looks like another stray post-it. Not sure which high school this is supposed to be for. I'm pro dog though. <laughs> oh, I really like her. Huh, Field of Daisies. My grandma's name is Daisy. She would hate it here. This balcony shows the expansive size of the Blackhaven estate. From here to the museum was only the front yard, 
with the entire farm extending far beyond the tree lines to the left and right. The hundreds of acres included multiple villages of farmhands, as well as a carpentry, smithy, and gristmill, each with its own craftsmen. And we are still learning more about Blackhaven even in the 21st century. On the plaque below is a traveling visitor's map of the entire estate, only recently discovered in the Library of Congress in 2006. Now continue back out and take a left into the Harwood bedroom. The sounds are really eerie. Okay, my last day, I'm taking a nap here. We can't be sure, but we believe this space was the master bedroom of Blackhaven Hall, where Thomas Harwood and his wife Sarah spent many loving years together. You'll also notice some of the period furnishing on display, including this real 18th century bed, possibly owned by the Harwoods themselves. While the frame is intact, the fabric on display is a modern reproduction. Many visitors admire the bed curtains on these old pieces, but few know their true purpose. In addition to keeping warmth in and insects out, bed curtains provided privacy between homeowners and any servants. After all, a man of Thomas's sterling reputation would never risk the embarrassment of running into a servant unexpectedly, especially in his honored bedroom. Now head out to the rear balcony overlooking the river for our next stop. Like they know what Thomas was getting up to in here. Mm-hmm. You are now standing in the same spot as Thomas Harwood during the most harrowing night of his entire life, the Battle of Blackhaven. After British General Cornwallis landed in Virginia in 1781, Thomas had worried about the threat of raids and even turned down an invitation to join General Washington in Williamsburg, choosing instead to stay behind and defend the private river homes. Finally, one fateful night, Thomas spotted the tall mast of a British ship over the trees through his spyglass. British agents came ashore, attempting to seek a peaceful surrender and forage, but according to Sarah's later account, brave farm workers fired warning shots before they could even reach the garden. The rest of the family and staff barricaded themselves in the house with muskets pointing down from every window. Plucky seven-year-old Elizabeth Harwood even risked life and limb to drape an American flag over the balcony, possibly the one now hanging in the museum. As nightfall approached, the British commanders lost their patience and trotted out small cannon and mortars to begin shelling the house. Cannonballs likely hit Blackhaven's walls, although later damage has made it difficult to tell, and aerial shells exploded terrifically in the air. Shrapnel from one bomb apparently broke an attic window and ignited a stack of linens, and Blackhaven was officially ablaze. The Harwoods and their servants fired back furiously, but the British waited for the flames to run their course. As the house filled with smoke, Thomas resolved to stay and become a true martyr for liberty, but Sarah pleaded with him to flee, assuring him that he could not help the new nation as a ghost. The family abandoned the raging fire and escaped into the night. Although we don't know for sure if the legend of Farmer Joe venturing into the burning house to save family heirlooms is true, crucial objects from the house do survive in our museum, whether they were carried or had been stowed away for safekeeping days before. What is certain is that the fire, which later spread to the nearby kitchen and stables, was final and marked a patriot defeat and the end of Blackhaven Hall. Now, head back to the ground level take a left, and continue to the site of the formal library. That's a lot of patriotism for one family getting their house burned down.
nifty. Ugh, the most interesting room, and this is all they've got to show. I concur. It is heartbreaking to believe that this was once the greatest library in all of the young United States. Filled with hundreds of leather-bound books, scientific instruments, and exotic animal and mineral specimens, the Blackhaven Library was designed by Thomas himself. His collection dwarfed even Thomas Jefferson's, and had it survive, Blackhaven's books, not Monticello's, might have been the basis for the Library of Congress. Lost, too, were Thomas's brilliant journals, some reportedly written in code, full of observations and experiments that might have rivaled Ben Franklin's. Little of the structure remains, possibly because the books here fueled an even hotter fire. The fire of Thomas Harwood's life would soon, too, burn out. Nearly a year after the battle, he began to suffer again from a mysterious illness that had plagued him for years. He finally succumbed to the disease and was buried with honor in Williamsburg before a massive crowd of patriots. Thomas's unexplained death spawned rumors of a poisoning, and even that Sarah had drugged Thomas after he had discovered a secret affair. But modern historians have found evidence only of a loving marriage and theorize that local Tories may have spread the rumors to discredit Thomas. His life now shines as an example to every American, a patriot who loved his wife and his country. You can now head down the stairs and to the left to the final plaque along the trail. They used a lot of ifs for Thomas in that one. Mm -hmm. Last one. Let's get back and get some lunch. This is the final stop in our audio tour. We recommend you head back to the museum using the left trail. Blackhaven Hall was never to be rebuilt, as Thomas had vowed that the ruins stand forever as a monument to British treachery. Sarah and her daughter Elizabeth went to live with family in Maryland before she eventually remarried. Thomas's brother William Harwood, a farmer and Episcopal minister, eventually purchased most of the estate from Sarah. A few miles down the road, he built his own new grand home at Oakmont, named for the small tree-covered hill nearby. Oakmont's foundations were built by dismantling the Blackhaven lawn and garden walls to make use of the bricks. Oakmont lacked the imposing size and grandeur of Blackhaven Hall, but the Harwoods continued their commitment to defending liberty and free enterprise for every American. Although their loyalties to their Virginian countrymen required them to defend against the Union in the Civil War, the nation mended its divisions and ventured into the 20th century even stronger. Now the family is arguably more famous for Harcourt Industries, a global economic juggernaut, but their story of American success began right here, in the humble fields of Blackhaven. This concludes the Blackhaven audio tour. If you haven't already, be sure to visit our galleries and to pick up something for the special patriot in your life at our gift store. Oakmont Plantation, still the current residence of the sixth generation of the Harwood family, is open for scheduled tours the first and third weekends of every month. And don't forget, both Blackhaven and Oakmont are available for weddings, anniversaries, and corporate events. We hope you enjoy the rest of your visit and find your own ways to honor the memory of our founding fathers. As Thomas Harwood once wrote, liberty is entrusted only to them who will work for it. Goodbye. Um, pretty sure there were some people working here who didn't get their liberty. Yep. So I don't know if there's going to be anything like cool and hidden in here. Like, um, we did get an achievement for reading the plaque that wasn't on the, uh, on the tour, but I kind of just want to look around. Um, if I don't find anything, I'll just trim this part. Oh, no hidden stuff. At least not here. I do like the fact they 
decided to use the 1776 flag up there, or at least I think it is. It's kind of hard to see the detail from here. All right, I guess let's head back inside. Herbs. sound. Whew. Well, that's as good as Blackhaven lunch gets. Probably should get started on my last task. Audio tour is done, so the only thing left is, oof, document scanning in the archive. Well, I better head over. Good afternoon. Thanks for calling Blackhaven Hall. This is Kendra speaking. How may I help you? Oh, hello, Kendra. Thank you so much for taking my call. I just had a couple tiny little questions about y'all's wedding options. So, we are considering a date in September. We're going to have the ceremony on the lawn with the great big oak trees and the view of the river and the reception in that magnificent new glass structure thing. But my question is, we're going to have a true flock of bridesmaids and us girls all stomping around all day in four-inch heels. We need a place to take a load off away from the boys. And, well, we thought it'd be a hoot if we could hole up in one of those little cabins. The cabins? Yeah, you know, the cute little ones with the droopy little chimneys that look like summer camp. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Blackhaven Hall is a large brick 18th century mansion. Oh, honey, I know Blackhaven. I just mean, like... When we went to have Cotillion at Shady Grove Plantation, they have those cute little cabins in a row out back. Um, do you mean the slave cabins? Oh, well, I mean, no, I don't think so. You know, we just thought it would be fun. You thought it would be fun for you and your girls to put your feet up in a slave cabin? Oh, you know, honey, I've kept you on the phone far too long. You must be so busy. I'll try back another time. I'm not busy. So thank you so much, dear. God bless. Oof. What the f- Exactly. Exactly. What are you doing? All right, guys. Well, I think this is a great place to leave off for today. Um, so we're going to start with the archival stuff um, next time. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. Um, yeah, some interesting surprises and some not surprises. So anyway, guys, as always, take care and happy sipping.